tuning in to the online broadcast network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, and welcome to the Arrow After Buzz After Show. I am your host, Yael Teagle. Ali Kona couldn't make it tonight. We're really bummed. Um, with me, Katie Cullen. Hi, all my buddies. Tori Miller. Hey, hey. Phil Svitek. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are talking about a story we've been waiting for for a long time. We have Felicity's backstory, a huge deal. We get her mom. This music is so menacing. It really is. Um, well, it's the music. It is. Um, we get Felicity's mother. We get her college days. We get mystery, murder. Um, it's a really good episode. <laughs> <laughs> and well timed. Yeah. Um, I want to start with Felicity's past. Winner. We see her uh, in her college days, and she's goth. Yeah. Yes. And I'm going to straight up say it. She looks great. <laughs> Evidently, half the world thinks she looks like uh, Neil Gaiman's death. Yeah, no, it looks like she was trying to do that. Would you be surprised? Yeah. She looked so good. I almost <laughs> didn't recognize her. I was like, who are these random people? Oh, that's Felicity. I get it. I like goth Felicity. Can I just say I love that she was coding Zwark? Yeah. That just makes me really happy. Mm -hmm. I've played it before. It's not as easy as you'd think. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for the fans book. It's really easy. <laughs> Says the person who's never been eaten by a Gru. <laughs> um, so we also get the story of her uh, boyfriend, who I personally did not care for. You don't say. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. He, he was so... You don't say. Even when he was a, like a, supposed to be... A, you know, sweet and crap, not uh, kidnapping. Not kidnapping. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that all the men in Felicity's life are kidnappy? What? What gives? Uh, is is Oliver kidnappy? He's done it before, just not with her. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes you just gotta kidnap somebody. Yeah. Just I like, disagree. <laughs> I think that's an impulse you can curb. We will talk about impulses that should be curbed in a bit when we get to hey. some other people. Hey. Uh, no. <laughs> um, well, we meet her boyfriend and his roommate, and we see that they're trying to be hacktivists, backward before hacktivists were a thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Felicity's made this uh, super virus, as they're calling it. And, yeah, air quotes. And her <laughs> boyfriend wants to do good with it. Sort of. Sort of. Her boyfriend's an idiot. Yeah. Her yes. boyfriend may have been well-intentioned, but I'm going to go in and delete all of the student loans. Oh, my gosh. You really think that they can't find you after yeah. stuff like that goes down? You really think they're not going to notice that? Yeah. Well-intentioned, but dumb as a sack of hammers. I mean, even that intention isn't that, like, well. It's more just like, I don't want to have to pay these, so I'm going to delete it from the federal exchange. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to argue that um, that he was, I'm, I believe that his intentions were, you know, free education for everyone. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. That's what I'm going with. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which doesn't make his methods, it, it, he's still an idiot as far as execution goes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And as much as I would love student loan forgiveness, let's, let's have a biblical jubilee year and forgive debts, that'd be fantastic. This is not the way to go about it. No, This is not. a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, which leads us to present day. Uh, where Felicity and the rest of Starling City is dealing with first a blackout and then a threat um, that the bank will be cleared out. Can I just say I was really amused by the big citywide blackout because evidently literally nobody has backup generators <laughs> or surge protectors or UPSs or, you know, anything that would turn the lights back on after the main power grid went out. What confused me was the driving. Like the people then like, veered off the road. Well, I was assuming that, like, 
you know, the lights were no longer working, so people didn't know how to, how to you know, stop sign themselves. Yeah, but they had lights on their car. Right. Yeah. But I mean the lights, like, uh, the stop si- the stop lights. For like, so there wasn't anything moderating have traffic. Have you never driven through, like, a, a dark street that has no lights? I have, but there have those aren't intersections. It's a matter of I was going 50 miles an hour and then the light went out. Oh, my God, what do I do? You and slow so people <laughs> You don't swerve off and hit a fire hydrant. <laughs> you expect people in Starling City to be smart. They stayed through two minor apocalypses. That's true. All the things that she says they're, they lack, you would think they would have uh, instituted after that giant earthquake machine. Yeah, and I understand true. that parts of Starling may not have the budget, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of poor people live there, the glades. I get it. Mm-hmm. You would think that the larger corporations and the government buildings, UPSs, backup generators, surge protectors. C- come on, guys. This is not difficult. The police station had a backup generator. The lights went out, but there were still, like, the emergency lights. Yeah. True. P- police station. Literally emergency. the only building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No one else. That's all you need is the police station. Yes, um, because Laurel does a bang-up job of that. Yeah, so Laurel is the acting uh, district attorney, and she's like, they're at the bank, and we need riot cops. The riot squad needs to go, which everyone's like, that's a bad idea. And she's like, I'm in charge. Oh, Laurel. Yeah. yeah. I love that she keeps pulling rank mm-hmm. uh, everywhere she goes. Yeah. It uh, it just kind of shows how, how spoiled she is. And I'm hoping that, like, over time, as she's getting her training, she'll kind of grow out of that. Yeah. I mean, at the end, we could, mm. let's let's talk about Laura real quick. Yeah, it's a short topic. Um, <laughs> she was training. She realizes that she is. I mean, anyone who's seen Zorro knows you don't like go into the fight with anger. You don't go in with revenge. You focus on what you're doing, and you you know you clear your head. And she goes in and who are you fighting? I'm angry. Blah blah blah. My sister was murdered. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying that she's not right and, and she should be sad, but like, you know, Detective Captain Officer Lance was right that she needs to talk to somebody about it. Yeah. And she does. She opens up and then he understands how to train her. Oh, okay. oh that yeah. was a touching moment. Red yeah. or black? Definitely black. Okay. Yeah. We get it. What? We get it. Black? Like a canary? <laughs> like a black canary? Oh, yeah, I don't say. I just got that. I am shocked. <laughs> I did not. You need more caffeine. Just... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's Laurel. Uh, let's get back to uh, the brother eye. What? So yeah. in the link that, what's his name? Ryan Ryan Is that Thanks, your name? Ryan. You're a glorious human being. Thank he you is. so much. In the link that he sent with all of the lovely, this is all the Easter eggs, this yeah. is all the everything. Evidently, Brother Eye in the comics was a sentient satellite hmm. that was also a villain. Like it, It's like having sound wave floating around in your atmosphere up there. And yeah. everyone who's not a Transformers fan is like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> sentient satellite. Yeah. So that's kind of an interesting thing to bring in because it may or may not have ties with another really big DC villain and it may or may not have ties with Argus and it may or may not have ties with, you know, half the sprawling DC universe. Yeah. So that's an interesting name to drop in what is, for the most part, a one-off episode. Right. Yeah. But it seems like it's just a, like a nod as opposed to a, a seed. I would love to see the virus mutate and become sentient and call itself Brother Eye. I think that would be <laughs> fascinating yeah. and a little bit outside the scope of what this show intends to cover. Yeah. Right. I agree. Um, I I think the eye reminded me a lot for those who watched Dark Angel for the first two seasons. Um, it reminded me a lot of that. I was <laughs> Dark Angel. <laughs> I was expecting it to be looking for Frodo. Yeah. Oh, yes. It was yeah. very Sauron-esque. Yeah. Bring me the Hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was it was an interesting idea. Mm-hmm. Um, I am glad that we now have some backstory about it. Yeah. We find out that it is run by Felicity's dead, not-so-dead uh, boyfriend, ex-boyfriend Cooper, who went to prison and then hung himself. But no, he was recruited by the NSA. <laughs> And then after he finished his time with the NSA, he... Because they let him go, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. He's only legally dead. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. I, 
I like, I'm really glad that Felicity brought up the fact that he was trying to help people. He's always saying he's trying to help people and be the hero. And in the end, it was about money. Right. I'm so glad she said something. It's about money and I'm the sellout? Yeah. Ridiculous. Maybe he was going to make it rain from a rooftop. Yeah, okay. You know? Maybe he needed to start a new life as a not dead person. That's uh-huh. true. That's expensive. You need, like, duplicate passports. <laughs> you need fake IDs. Mm-hmm. I'm just really amused Honeys. that in the world of Argus and the League of Assassins and all of these other spooky fictional organizations, yeah. he works for the NSA. Well, he worked it's for the worked NSA. Worked past tense. Yeah. Nonetheless, for the NSA, they couldn't have name-dropped Argus. They couldn't have said I were a private contractor right. pulled me out. They couldn't have done... Anything else, they're like, here's this little slice of reality that doesn't jive with the show mm-hmm. at all. Have fun. I agree. It's an I odd would, choice. I would like to see, I mean, what he did was something huge that can't just, like, next week can't disappear. You know, it's such right. a big deal. The super virus was such a huge uh, thing that Felicity had built. I can't imagine that next week we're like, well, that was a fun episode. Let's move on. I'm ex- <laughs> you well, expect that it I, will. Yeah. Because it felt so it felt so much like a like a just a small volume of a comic. Like you just read this one small confined story and then it's over. Mm-hmm. Um and I think that's why the whole NSA thing works within this story is that like it's something that you can just go, "Okay, cool. It has no greater meaning. It's just like he worked for the NSA. Mm-hmm. He's doing his own thing now and he's done." Interesting. And he brought Felicity's mom in because we got to meet her. Ah, uh, yes. I am glad she pointed out that she dresses like a porn star. <laughs> she spent the entire episode in one, until the end, in, in one blue dress. That was partially see-through in The places. important places. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or the not important places, really. It was covered in the important places. Well, like this isn't HBO. <laughs> Yeah, It'd be a ve- it would be a very different show if it were HBO. Yeah, we could. just see Oliver working out in the nude. We're all like, mm-hmm. <laughs> wait, no, HBO thing. doesn't do male nudity. That's right, mm. just for women. So anyway. everyone else on the salmon ladder, yeah, <laughs> oh, the salmon ladder. So much. We haven't had a salmon ladder in a good long while. I, I agree. miss it. We yeah, we need a good salmon ladder. This has become a euphemism. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> I do need a good salmon ladder. Um, I think we could all use a good salmon ladder. We're saying salmon platter, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, dear. Yes. Oh, okay. You know what the salmon ladder is? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. It's the the. <laughs> 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 yes. For those not watching, I'm making gestures. <laughs> um, on that note, those who are at home with their salmon ladders, let's take a moment to talk about iTunes. That's right. I found no segue. <laughs> Screw um, it. We don't need one. Guys, we are doing this podcast here because we love Arrow. Clearly, we love Arrow. We love salmon ladders. And we love salmon platters. <laughs> And there's one very simple thing we're asking from you, our listeners, our fans, our <laughs> viewers, downloaders, streamers. Um, go on to iTunes, rate and review this podcast. If you like us, give us five stars. If you don't like us, that's okay. We forgive you. You can give us four stars. We'll accept it. Um, but leave a comment. Let us know what we're doing well, what we could be doing better, uh, what you think of sa- salmon ladders and platters. <laughs> and, um, you know, that's all we ask. Also, we love talking to people on the YouTube comments. Yeah, and definitely. Twitter, so keep uh, bothering us. We love it. Give us five salmon ladders out of five. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we will use all five of them. Yeah, we will. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about um, a quick moment that happened that we all panicked when um, Felicity's mother is taking care of Diggle's baby, Sarah. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. And right before they realize that uh, Felicity's mom, Donna, was brought here for a reason, uh, she says that the nanny came to pick up Sarah. Oh, yeah, from some company called Argus. And, and we all went, were like, what? Oh, and I was scared that I was right about Lila. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Um, and then later, thankfully, Diggle like, is like, no, I sent someone from Argus to pick up the baby. And we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> the script writer oh. knew that the fans were going to freak out over the commercial break. Yeah. And that particularly, yeah, someone from Argus is the baby. We're all going to be like, no, 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 
what yeah. I mean? It was like a throwaway line to scare the living snot out of you. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah, it, yeah. Did. it worked. I like to imagine that Argus agent, come, like, getting that phone call being like, hey, I know you're a, a highly trained professional. Assassin. But can you uh, <laughs> pick up my baby uh, and just kind of hang out with her for a little while? <laughs> it's like... I don't get paid enough for that. Yeah. I'm imagining some dude that's like six foot ten and several hundred pounds and built like a fridge going, sure, I love babies. <laughs> Who's the cutest little baby? You're the cutest little baby. I really want I to just, see, I can this see this person. <laughs> I know, right? It'd be sounds, great. He sounds wonderful. <laughs> um, I'm sure he can do salmon ladders too. Yeah, I'd like to see that as well. All right. I want to talk about <laughs> Ray Palmer who shows up at Felicity's, oh that's how the episode starts. Here we he go. starts at, Ray's, at, at Felicity's apartment uh, early in the morning while she's doing her crunches. And then uh, later on, it seems he only shows up when Felicity's mom is there. Every scene, mm. he shows up, Felicity's crying, and then her mom shows up. I'm willing to write that off as comedic timing mm -hmm. to try and lighten a little bit of what's been going on in the episode. I'm. I'm willing to give okay. that to the writers and say, okay, it's funny that he keeps walking in at, a, at an opportune times. Showing up at her house before work hours while he's fully clothed and she is not. No, that's it. You said it. It's incredibly inappropriate for a boss to do that mm -hmm. to an employee. Yeah. If you're friends with your employees, sure, fine. If you're like buddy, buddy, and you go to hockey games together or whatever, like, okay, cool, sure. Sorry, you threw me off at hockey games. <laughs> <laughs> it's a game with sticks and pucks. Okay, my coworkers are all friends. This is, that, is a thing that happens. That's the one on the grass. Uh, it can be played on the grass. Okay. Um, go Kings. <laughs> anyway. Um, anyway, go if Queens? your friends, what? it you're okay. Shh, it's okay, dear. It's okay. <laughs> If you're friends with your coworkers, if you're friends with your subordinates, if you've been friends for a while, fine. We show up, we go out to breakfast. Yeah. What the heck ever? Who cares? You just started working for me after I stopped you and wouldn't accept no for an answer. Now I'm going to show up at your house uninvited and unannounced. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I think that they're trying to kind of, I mean, that, that whole beginning stocky thing mm -hmm. aside, like, I think they're trying to make him more, feel more like a kind of a Tony Stark where he's just so focused on his his uh, work, that he doesn't really care about personal boundaries or anything. He's just like, I have a thing. I want a thing, and I want to share this thing with you because you know my things. Say it again. I have a thing. I, I have a thing. I want to share my thing with you. you. Yes. That, I Salmon ladders. I think that's exactly <laughs> what he's saying. The difference uh, is Tony Stark has Pepper, and Pepper's the one who kind of goes, no, you can't do the thing. No, he doesn't want to see that thing. No, you have an appointment for a different thing. Stop. Stop. We're doing this now. Right. Felicity does not want to be his Pepper. Yes. This but is just not I, how it he's works. He's trying to make her uh, I into think Yeah, I think Felicity her. is supposed to be yeah. the Pepper. But she doesn't want it. Pepper knows what she's getting into with Tony, and she is well equipped to deal with his level of uh, nonsense. Felicity does not want any of that, didn't want it from the beginning, and it's just really, really messed up for him to try to force this on yeah. her. Right. I mean, but you, one could assume, I don't know what Pepper's backstory is. I'm sorry, fans and people, but like, I would assume that she They're probably DC didn't. fans, they don't know either. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I assume that she didn't start be like as a super willing participant. She was just like, I'm going to go into my assistant job. And it was just like, this is nuts. Um, I mean, she probably stayed because Tony's a genius for the same reason that, like, uh, Felicity is working with Ray now. Because, I mean, despite all of his shortcomings or despite what we like or don't like about him, he is really smart and he does have, uh, I mean, we don't know what, exactly what they are, but he seems to have a good plan for Starling City or Star City. I'd be really surprised if Tony stalked Pepper. I mean, he probably hit on her, and she probably put him in his place so fast his head spun. But I don't think that relationship started out the way that we're seeing uh, Felicity and Ray's relationship start out here. Right. And this is just, this is not good ground to build anything that includes any level of privacy or trust. Well, I think there are a lot of uh, opinions and emotions on how this relationship is beginning and turning out and where it's going. Yeah. Speaking of relationships, I want to talk about Thea, um, who is back in town and is buying an apartment, which I'm going to say it has too many fireplaces <laughs> that for whatever reason, two. yeah, they were lit for whatever reason. 
whatever. Um, <laughs> because it's cool, yo. Sure. So Oliver, my brother's coming over. I have no furniture. I have to impress him. Fire. Fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oliver asks her where the money comes from, and I'm glad she says it. Like you know, Malcolm Merlin was my father. He left money. He's dead. Therefore, I have money. And then we realize that, well, we being Oliver, realizes that that is the money that paid for um, her bar and for her to do what she wants now. Th that is her investor. I love that she reveals that to him. Mm -hmm. And I love even more that he then says, he slips and says, you know, Malcolm is blah, 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 as opposed to was, and then is like, hey, he's alive. I love that they're both being honest. They're making steps towards honesty. Mm hmm I'm very excited. Can he say his big secret, please? <laughs> uh, well, and, go ahead. No, go for it. Well, and hers is, yeah, that's where I've been for the past few months. And she's been, he's, wow, that, wow. He's been training me and I know he's alive and he's my dad and we've been bonding. Right. And that's her big secret. And I'm still waiting for both of those big secrets to come out at the least opportune moments and to cause horrible i thought we were being honest well you're not being honest either well right. we're family yeah um i steal i still uh <laughs> and you and me both <laughs> you and me both yeah. um no i still feel like she knows about oliver being the arrow especially when she was at that door mm. trying to get in um yeah there's something inside of me that's just like she's just waiting for a good time to like catch him up or, I mean, she's going to pretend like she doesn't know forever because it might be to her benefit in some way. Yeah. I think it definitely it would be in her benefit. Um, I think that you might be right that she does know and she's going to continue to try to catch him in it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it might be a manipulative ploy of like, I have to catch you in this so that I could be like, ah, oh, you lied to me and I knew you were lying and you're always a liar. Um that's what I think it might be. Mm -hmm. But I, I like that they have that door scene um, where he's like, I don't know what's down there. And also when there's no power, it locks down. <laughs> but I don't know what's in there. Yeah. It's smooth, Oliver. <laughs> and then at the end of the episode, they're moving in together, which is ridiculous to me. Yeah. These two people leading secret lives, trying to be in under one roof. Yeah. With a huge windows everywhere as one of the walls it's like yeah that's that's incredibly secure good job everyone well when they were looking at the apartment to begin with and then the power goes out and oliver leaves he left out the window i'm it like was the she... balcony door yeah that's what i know but like if she didn't know before she knows <laughs> now <laughs> fire escape there, no that was a balcony yeah there, there was nothing below it um but we see at the end Malcolm is watching them through the window, not in a creepy way, in an angry way. I always feel like somebody's <laughs> watching me. Yep, that. So <laughs> she didn't even get curtains. That place is going to get so hot during the day. Maybe they will get curtains. <laughs> Maybe she likes it hot. Didn't you see those fireplaces? Also, that's true. She doesn't seem to own a single full shirt this season. <laughs> I don't mind. No one minds. I just want it noted that that not once has she worn a complete top. Well, yeah. <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's like a Padawan thing. Like as she's training under Merlin, he's like, "All right, you get to wear full shirts when you're full when you're a full mm. master." Yeah. Okay. I'll tell okay. You. <laughs> and if that's the case, I want flashbacks to what Merlin's training was like. Half Hello. Shirts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, only like bottom half. Yeah. No. I, I, Malcolm <laughs> Merlin's salmon ladders. Yeah, I'd watch that. Chicken, chicken, chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and all the audio people are like, what the hell? No, they know what a salmon ladder is. They watch the show. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, we also get just a little bit talked about Felicity's father. Um, I don't know the story behind Felicity's father. I don't either. I don't think um, we in the show audience know. All I'm right. sure comic readers or people who are very familiar with Arrow can be like, nah, I know this. I'm sure there will yes. be long, prolific comments And after we look this. forward to them. We do. Because we admit that we know nothing. Yeah, um, let us know. Jon Snow. Yeah, we do. Um, and it was interesting to hear, like, reference to that he exists and left and, and was a genius. Yeah. That's exciting. Sounds like a well, winner. Yeah, I well, agree. After meeting her mom, you're like, okay, yeah, it must be the dad. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, so why did... Why would he have left? 
I mean, who knows? I think Michael maybe he's part of Argus. That's what I would assume. Mm. It could be interesting. Yeah. Or the League of Shadows. He's Ra's Al Ghul. Oh God. <laughs> Uh, Sorry. No. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. We've already got one of his kids on the show. Let's let's ch- no. All right. Uh, before we wrap up, I want to talk about Roy's dream? <laughs> Question mark. Repressed memory. Yeah. Well, the last five seconds of the show. Yeah. Um. Thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you lead with this one, Katie. Yeah. <laughs> Throwing yeah. arrows that should not have been as funny as it was. Because well, it was this big what on God's green earth moment, but it was also like you couldn't bring a bow. Yeah. You couldn't bring a bow. Well, but okay. that also to me speaks of Miracuru serum, because he's yeah. throwing them pretty dang hard. Right. Tari. <laughs> um that was it was funny. I'm sorry, now arrows. that's all I can think of. Um is him throwing, <laughs> him throwing, throwing arrows. Because it's ah. like it's not like he doesn't know how to shoot them. Yeah. It's not like he couldn't have just found a boat is like but again anyways uh i'm assuming that it he's like since he's been trying so hard to repress his like mirakuru rage Mm -hmm. um it's like manifesting in other ways i don't know why it would specifically have him target sarah but um i in my my thoughts are it has it has to be something like that unless he's being mind controlled which i don't know if we have a precedent for that Possession, hypnosis, yeah, mind control. I don't think we have a precedent for that either, which I would like. Just because we don't have a precedent for it doesn't mean they won't introduce it. Yeah. That's true. I, I would like that to be it. That would be interesting. Mm-hmm. For now, this is just the five-second stinger to make us freak the hell out until next week. Yeah. Just yeah. Like which is the, the point. Just like the, oh, I let the uh, nanny from Argus take the baby. <laughs> what? <laughs> um... Awesome. I am not Ali Kona, therefore we do not have news and gossip or photos. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I apologize. Mm, um, I miss those. I apologize, but if you close your eyes, you can imagine shirtless men or women. I'm okay or with both. that. Anyway. Um, <laughs> shirtless <laughs> Felicity. <laughs> goth Felicity shirtless on the uh, salmon ladder. Like it. All right. That <laughs> let's hurt. go into predictions. And now... Your After Buzz TV predictions. It looks like in the um, trailer or promo for next week, we see uh, Roy and Felicity talking about his dreams, quote unquote. Are they repressed memories? Are they real? Um, Let's talk about predictions. Tari, what are you thinking? Um, I am definitely assuming that they're real, uh, especially from the perspective that we viewed it where he is... Like, he sees what we saw uh, in the original shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's no way that he, his character would know any of that without being there. I agree. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to, I don't know if he's going to tell Oliver um, and if, if it'll just stay between him and Felicity. But uh, I, what? I just don't think Felicity's <laughs> the kind of person to not... If if Roy tells her, Felicity's not going to not tell, be like, you have to tell Oliver. Right. Um, she but, has a precedent for this. That's true. Um, but I'm looking forward to that whole thing because mm-hmm. Oliver uh, is, he, I, he's so ragey when it comes to p- losing people he loves. So just him dealing with that will be really fun. Yeah. Well, it's been happening a lot recently, so you can't really blame him. Yeah. Yeah. Katie, predictions. For one, I think we're going out of the frying pan and into the fire, and I kind of figured that with the way that this episode was going, Mm -hmm. because there are a lot of series that are plot, plot, plot. Okay, we're going to take a minute. We're going to let the audience breathe. We're going to give you kind of a one-off episode, and then we're going to throw you headfirst into a wall at the end of it so you can freak out, and you'll be watching next week after this episode that was, you know, like you said, a single-issue comic. Yeah. Yeah. So I love that that's what this was. Mm Mm-hmm. I do think that we're going to see the virus come back at some point. If it's not next week, it'll be closer to mid-season or season finale. Yeah. It'll come up, oh, I have this thing that can do this. Or, oh, someone else got a hold of the thing. Or, oh, it's developing sentience. Yeah. <laughs> Something. I Honestly, I don't think that Roy's the killer. Mm. I think that this is going to be one huge fake out in some capacity. Or if he is it will be someone else pulling the strings. I don't think it's just he raged out one night and up and murdered her. 
there is obviously much more going on here beneath the surface. And again, I am up for possession, mind control, hypnosis, etc. Awesome. I want to see where they'll go with this. Great. We've had hallucinogenics already. We have. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. And um, I love that they laid the groundwork for this. I haven't been sleeping well. I haven't been sleeping well. He hasn't been sleeping well for like three episodes. Yeah. Mm. So I love that that's just been a thing they've been throwing in there. So it's like, oh, this is why mm. it's not straight out of left field. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I uh, think I want to thank everyone who tweeted at me that they also ship Nissa and Laurel. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love how many people are like, yeah, that sounds great. I also want to thank whoever sent me the um, I don't care, I ship it uh, cover. Yeah, oh, yeah, that yeah, was really yeah. good. Um, agreed. And um, I predict that we are headed straight into November sweeps, which means we're going to have some exciting episodes. And I think that by uh, winter finale, we will lose a character. Oh. I'm just going to make predictions with no basis, guys. We gosh darn better. Yeah. Are we um, going to make a pool as to who it is? No, I just, I don't know if it's actually going to happen. I just decided someone will die by the end of 2014. I want to make a pool. I think it'll be Nyssa. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm going to sink your ship. <laughs> Great. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us today for the Air After Show. Hopefully... We will have Ali Kota back next week. Uh, mm -hmm. Tari, tell the people where they can find you online. You can find me on Twitter at Tari J. That's T-A-U-R-I-J-A-Y. Uh, you can also find me on assorted panels here on After Buzz TV, like the 100 panel on Wednesdays. <laughs> I'm Katie Cullen. You can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at Kiaxe. That's K-I-A-X-E-T. I am also on the Sword Art Online, Z Nation, and Star Wars Rebels panels. Awesome. And of course, you can find me online at yell.tv. That's Y-A-E-L.tv. You can also find information about all the shows I do here at AfterBuzz, including Constantine and SVU and many more. Also, information about the beautiful stylings from Siren's Boudoir. I'm also on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Google Plus at Yell Teagle. That's Y-A-E-L-T-Y-G-I-E. We'll see you next week. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Hallucinogenics already. We have. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. Um, and I love that they laid the groundwork for this. I haven't been sleeping well. I haven't been sleeping well. He hasn't been sleeping well for like three episodes. Yeah. Mm. So I love that that's just been a thing they've been throwing in there. So it's like, oh, this is why mm. it's not straight out of left field. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I, uh, think I want to thank everyone who tweeted at me that they also ship Nyssa and Laurel. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love how many people are like, yeah, that sounds great. I also want to thank whoever sent me the, um, I don't care. I ship it, uh, cover. Yeah. Oh, yeah that yeah, was really yeah. good. Um, agreed. And, um, I predict that we are headed straight into November sweeps, which means we're going to have some exciting episodes. And I think that by... Uh, winter finale, we will lose a character. Oh. I'm just going to make predictions <laughs> with no basis, guys. We gosh darn better. Yeah. Are we um, going to make a pool as to who it is? No, I just, I don't know if it's actually going to happen. I just decided someone will die by the end of 2014. I want to make a pool. I think it'll be Nyssa. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm going to sink your ship. <laughs> Great. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us today for the Air After Show. Hopefully we will have Ali Kota back next week. Uh, mm -hmm. Tari, tell the people where they can find you online. You can find me on Twitter at Tari J. That's T-A-U-R-I-J-A-Y. Uh, you can also find me on assorted panels here on After Buzz TV, like the 100 panel on Wednesdays. <laughs> the difference uh, is... Tony Stark has Pepper, and Pepper's the one who kind of goes, no, you can't do the thing. No, he doesn't want to see that thing. No, you have an appointment for a different thing. Stop. Stop. We're doing this now. Right. Felicity does not want to be his Pepper. Yes. This but is just not I, how it he's works. He's trying to make her uh, I into think Yeah, I think Felicity her. is supposed to be yeah. the Pepper. But she doesn't want it. Pepper knows what she's getting into with Tony, and she is well equipped to deal with his level of uh, nonsense. Felicity does not want any of that, didn't want it from the beginning, and it's just really, really messed up for him to try to force this on yeah. her. Right. 
I mean, but you, one could assume, I don't know what Pepper's backstory is. I'm sorry, fans and people, but like, I would assume that she They're probably DC didn't. fans, they don't know either. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I assume that she didn't start be like as a super willing participant. She was just like, I'm going to go into my assistant job. And it was just like, this is nuts. Um, I mean, she probably stayed because Tony's a genius for the same reason that like, uh, Felicity is working with Ray now because I mean despite all of his shortcomings or despite what we like or don't like about him he is really smart and he does have uh, I mean we don't know what exactly what they are but he seems to have a good plan for Starling City or Star City I'd be really surprised if Tony stalked Pepper I mean he probably hit on her and she probably put him in his place so fast his head spun but I don't think that relationship started out the way that we're seeing uh, Felicity and Ray's relationship start out here. Right. And this is just, this is not good ground to build anything that includes any level of privacy or trust. Well, I think there are a lot of uh, opinions and emotions on how this relationship is beginning and turning out and where it's going. Yep. Speaking of relationships, I want to talk about Thea. Um, who is back in town and is buying an apartment, which I'm going to say it has too many fireplaces <laughs> that for whatever reason, two. yeah, they were lit for whatever reason, whatever. Um, <laughs> because it's cool, yeah. Sure. So Oliver, my brother's coming over. I have no furniture. I have to impress him. Fire. fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oliver asks her where the money comes from. And I'm glad she says it like, you know, Malcolm Merlin was my father. He left money. He's dead. Therefore, I have money. And then we realize that, well, we, being Oliver, realizes that that is the money that paid for um, her bar and for her to do what she wants now. Th that is her investor. I love that she reveals that to him. Mm -hmm. And I love even more that he then says, he slips and says, you know, Malcolm is blah, 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 as opposed to was, and then is like, hey, he's alive. I love that they're both being honest. They're making steps towards honesty mm -hmm. i'm very excited can he say about it yeah and she does she opens up and then he understands how to train her oh okay. that was yeah. a sweet. touching moment red yeah. or black definitely black okay yeah. we get it what we get it black like a canary <laughs> like a black canary oh, yeah i don't say i just got that i am shocked <laughs> i did not you need more caffeine just... <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's laurel uh let's get back to uh the brother eye what so yeah. in the link that what's his name ryan ryan is that Thanks, your name ryan. you're a glorious human being thank he you is. so much in the link that he sent with all of the lovely, this is all the Easter eggs, this yeah. is all the everything. Evidently, Brother Eye in the comics was a sentient satellite hmm. that was also a villain. Like it, It's like having sound wave floating around in your atmosphere up there. And hmm. everyone who's not a Transformers fan is like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> sentient satellite. Yeah. So that's kind of an interesting thing to bring in because it may or may not have ties with another really big DC villain and it may or may not have ties with Argus and it may or may not have ties with, you know, half the sprawling DC universe. Yeah. So that's an interesting name to drop in what is, for the most part, a one-off episode. Right. Yeah. But it seems like it's just a, like a nod as opposed to a, a seed. I would love to see the virus mutate and become sentient and call itself Brother Eye. I'd like to imagine that Argus agent, like, getting that phone call being like, hey, I know you're a highly trained professional, Assassin. but... Assassin. Can you uh, <laughs> pick up my baby uh, and just kind of hang out with her for a little while? <laughs> it's like... I don't get paid enough for that. Yeah. I'm imagining some dude that's like six foot ten and several hundred pounds and built like a fridge going, sure, I love babies. <laughs> Who's the cutest little baby? You're the cutest little baby. I really want I to just, see, I can this see this person. <laughs> I know, right? That'd he be sounds, great. He sounds wonderful. <laughs> Um, I'm sure he can do salmon ladders, too. Yeah, I'd like to see that as well. <laughs> All right. I want to talk about <laughs> Ray Palmer, who shows up. At Felicity's, oh that's how the episode starts. Here we go. He starts at, Ray's, at, at Felicity's apartment uh, early in the morning while she's doing her crunches. And then uh, later on, it seems he only shows up when Felicity's mom is there. Every scene, mm. he shows up, Felicity's crying, and then her mom shows up. 
I'm willing to write that off as comedic timing mm -hmm. to try and lighten a little bit of what's been going on in the episode. I'm I'm willing to give okay. that to the writers and say, okay, it's funny that he keeps walking in at, a, at an opportune times. Showing up at her house before work hours while he's fully clothed and she is not. No, that's it. You said it. It's incredibly inappropriate for a Boston. And who are you fighting? I'm angry. Blah, blah, blah. My sister was murdered. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying that she's not right and, and she should be sad, but like you know, Detective Captain Officer Lance was right, that she needs to talk to somebody about it. Yeah. And she does. She opens up, and then he understands how to train her. Aww. Okay. Oh, that yeah. was sweet. A touching moment. Red yeah. or black? Definitely black. Okay. Yeah. We get it. What? We get it. Black? Like a canary? <laughs> like a black canary? Oh, yeah, I don't say. I just got that. I'm shocked. <laughs> I did not. You need more caffeine. Just... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's Laurel. Uh, let's get back to uh, the brother eye. What? So yeah. in the link that, what's his name? Ryan Ryan Is that Thanks, your name? Ryan. You're a glorious human being. Thank he you is. so much. In the link that he sent with all of the lovely, this is all the Easter eggs, this yeah. is all the everything. Evidently, Brother Eye in the comics was a sentient satellite hmm. that was also a villain. Like it, It's like having sound wave floating around in your atmosphere up there. And hmm. everyone who's not a Transformers fan is like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Sentient satellite. Yeah. So that's kind of an interesting thing to bring in because it may or may not have ties with another really big DC villain and it may or may not have ties with Argus and it may or may not have ties with, you know, half the sprawling DC universe. Yeah. So student loans, oh my gosh, you really think that they can't find you after yeah. stuff like that goes down? You really think they're not going to notice that? Yeah. Well intentioned, but dumb as a sack of hammers. I mean, even that intention isn't that, like, well, it's more just like, I don't want to have to pay these, so I'm going to delete it from the federal exchange. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to argue that, um, that he was, I, I believe that his intentions were, you know, free education for everyone. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. That's what I'm going with. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which doesn't make his methods... It, it, he's still an idiot as far as execution goes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And as much as I would love student loan forgiveness, let's let's have a biblical jubilee year and forgive debts, that'd be fantastic. This is not the way to go about it. No, This is a not. bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Which leads us to present day, uh, where Felicity and the rest of Starling City is dealing with first a blackout and then a threat um, that the bank will be cleared out. Can I just say I was really amused by the big citywide blackout because evidently literally nobody has backup generators <laughs> or surge protectors or UPSs or, you know, anything that would turn the lights back on after the main power grid went out. What confused me was the driving. Like, the people then, like, veered off the road. Well, I was assuming that, like... You know, the lights were no longer working, so people didn't know how to, how to you know, stop sign themselves. Yeah, but uh, opinions and emotions on how this relationship is beginning and turning out and where it's going. Yep. Speaking of relationships, I want to talk about Thea, um, who is back in town and is buying an apartment, which... I'm going to say it has too many fireplaces <laughs> that for whatever reason, two. yeah, they were lit for whatever reason, whatever. Um, <laughs> because it's cool, yo. Sure. So Oliver, my brother's coming over. I have no furniture. I have to impress him. Fire. Fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oliver asks her where the money comes from. And I'm glad she says it. Like, you know, Malcolm Merlin was my father. He left money. He's dead. Therefore, I have money. And then we realize that, well, we being Oliver, realizes that that is the money that paid for um, her bar and for her to do what she wants now. Th that is her investor. I love that she reveals that to him. Mm -hmm. And I love even more that he then says, he slips and says, you know, Malcolm is blah, blah, blah. It's supposed to was. And then is like, hey, he's alive. I love that they're both being honest. They're making steps towards honesty. Mm hmm I'm very excited. Can he say his big secret, please? <laughs> uh, well, and, go ahead. No, go for it. Well, and hers is, yeah, that's where I've been for the past few months. And she's been, he's, wow, that, wow. He's been training me and I know he's alive and he's my dad and we've been bonding. Right. And that's her big secret. What? I just don't think Felicity's <laughs> the kind of person to not 
if if Roy tells her, Felicity's not going to not tell, be like, you have to tell Oliver. Right. Um, she but, has a precedent for this. That's true. Um, but I'm looking forward to that whole thing because mm-hmm. Oliver uh, is, he, I, he's so ragey when it comes to p- losing people he loves. So just him dealing with that will be really fun. Yeah. Well, it's been happening a lot recently, so you can't really blame him. Yeah. Yeah. Katie, predictions. For one, I think we're going out of the frying pan and into the fire, and I kind of figured that with the way that this episode was going, Mm -hmm. because there are a lot of series that are plot, plot, plot. Okay, we're going to take a minute. We're going to let the audience breathe. We're going to give you kind of a one-off episode, and then we're going to throw you headfirst into a wall at the end of it so you can freak out, and you'll be watching next week after this episode that was, you know, like you said, a single-issue comic. Yeah. Yeah. So I love that that's what this was. Mm Mm-hmm. I do think that we're going to see the virus come back at some point. If it's not next week, it'll be closer to mid-season or season finale. Yeah. It'll come up, oh, I have this thing that can do this. Or, oh, someone else got a hold of the thing. Or, oh, it's developing sentience. Yeah. <laughs> Something. I Honestly, I don't think that Roy's the killer. Mm. I think that this is going to be one huge fake out in some capacity.